so just a note before the main spoiler cast, this recording you're seeing, uh, the video of me playing the game is actually on Hurt Me Plenty difficulty and was just hastily put together so that there was something to look at when this is uploaded onto YouTube. Um, yeah, so it it's on Hurt Me Plenty difficulty, it's not ultra-violence, which is how I first played through the game. There are some changes that are quite noticeable, but um, I had massive trouble because I was playing it through a like remote play setup and my internet was being really shitty. So there are sections where I suddenly just start firing into the air randomly, doing random pirouettes, uh, randomly start walking sideways to the edge of the thing and go flying off of things, or just unload every single gun in my uh, inventory at nothing or just look at the floor and fire a rocket at the floor. This isn't actually like how I normally play. So any witty comments later saying, oh wow, no doubt, no surprise you had trouble playing the game of ultra violence. You're literally shooting your own feet. Yeah, yeah, I fucking know. <laughs> like, you know, that's not how I normally play. Like, ooh, gun go on foot. Yeah, I I'm actually aware that's not how you shoot a gun. Um, it also just furthers my point of why I can't do a full LP for anybody, because uh, it kind of keeps, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I've been getting a lot of these problems lately, um, but not so much on the platformers, just on anything that's quite high, high speed, so like this, or like fighting games, so it's kind of affecting my ability to LP those right now. So that's more just an aside about my setup issues and me bitching about it. Um, you'll see in the gameplay how it is a bit more trolly. Uh, there were a couple of things I noticed that they changed. Uh, little fixes here and some things that would just seem designed to just fuck you up more. Like the carcasses are even more trolly. Like, now they'll put their shields in front of literally everything. You're, like, moving down a corridor, and it will just stop you picking up a power-up. It'll stop you when a downed enemy is there, which it always did. But it'll even stop you shooting at a certain thing, like a turret or something, which was just really frustrating. Really annoying, because they named the most annoying new character, uh, enemy character in the entire game after one of my favorite bands, so that was nice. <laughs> um... Thanks for ruining that name for me forever. Um, I also noticed that to deal with the fact that, like, sometimes if you use the meat hook on the super shotgun at too close of a range or are facing upwards and you just kind of bounce off of the guy and miss or it just straight up doesn't give you the chance to shoot because you're too close range uh, when you fire the meat hook, it leaves the guy on fire now for a long enough time that you can still shoot him and get the armor bonus. Whereas in the base game when I was playing it, this fix was not there. So that's a nice fix. Um, spoilers for the first level's gameplay and design too, which was actually really nice. I really liked the setting. Uh, it had a lot of great scenery to it. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this this playthrough of the game and the playthrough that I'm about to talk about that I was review I'm reviewing the game on is uh, it was actually really helpful in teaching me how to deal with the um, cyber mancubus because I kept making the same mistake again and again of just hitting it and hitting it, but if you just run up and blood punch it, it really just trivializes that enemy. It's very much like it's like a bit ridiculously hardcore like um shortcut like like the cacos and their um swallowing the grenade trick it's just like <clears throat> yeah so this this helped me uh learn a few things and uh it also helped me learn a few things about recording uh without my mic on so uh i might do that and do post commentary for some fighting games in the future but I need to sort out my setup so that it doesn't just do jank shit all the way through and just start making me walk forwards or start randomly pressing buttons without my uh, say-so because otherwise that's going to be a really shit fighting game playthrough. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so uh, enjoy my 
thoughts and my first impression of Doom, uh, the Ancient Gods DLC Part 1. It's pretty much all I have to say on the subject right now. Uh, there's a few things that keep slipping my mind, but every time I hit record, they just go out of my head. So uh, I'm sure I'll be talking about it in some other things. So uh, yeah, this is it for now. Um, looking forward to part two. Probably going to play this a few more times, but like uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of practice first before I get really into the heavy, heavier difficulties, definitely for sure. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Pass me, we'll take it from here. The following is going to be a spoiler cast for part one of the Ancient Gods DLC for Doom Eternal. Although standalone too, whatever. Um, so anticipate massive spoilers in case you clicked on this without reading the title. Yeah, I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to just click away. I guess you're gone. That was actually five seconds. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I got some thoughts. Some big thoughts. Uh, the reason I'm not doing an LP on the Doom DLC is because, honestly, it's pretty fucking hard. <laughs> like, I went through it on Ultra Violence thinking, yeah, I've been in the base game on Ultra Violence twice. Uh, I did it on Extra Life Mode at one point, or I did most of it on Extra Life Mode, then I got bored because it was like the seventh time I played through on it by that point. I've done the Master Levels on Ultra Violence. I thought I knew what I was doing. Uh, yeah, Ultraviolence on the DLC, it doesn't fuck around. <laughs> like, there's some shit on there, and you're like... You know, it, the response you get is just your brain just goes, Oh, come on, man! <laughs> like, you just sat there like, seriously? Like, you're gonna put me in a small room with two marauders? The fuck? You're gonna put me in a room where there's literally a fucking corridor and the tyrant, and there's nowhere for me to move. You're gonna put me in a hemisphere that if I go outside of, I take consistent damage over time, and then put loads of charging enemies within that small space that I have to kind of squeeze around, like we're at some sort of mixer party. I mean... We'll talk about the level separately, kind of, a little bit. And I wanted to talk about story elements, too, because I thought, basically, there's a lot here that I want to discuss, and I definitely cannot play the game and discuss it at the same time. <clears throat> and also the length of the level. So there's three levels, and it took me, today, I started at, like, half 3, 4 p.m., and it took me from then until half 9 at night to finish where I had gotten to before, which was about halfway through the Blood Swamp level, like I'd done one of the trials, and it was the harder trial, because I did them in the wrong order, because I'm a genius. They gave you an option, I chose the hard one without really knowing, because I take the left-hand path first because I'm left-handed. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. And yeah, that was the tougher trial I found overall, so yeah. That's the one without the hemisphere of death. That's the one with the, uh, the small visual distance and everything is a fucking spirit and you have to fight a buffed marauder before you can kill the buff totem. And then you get there at the top of the tower and the final battle is just some bullshit where I was literally like, oh my god, like, you got, like, a buff totem with revenants, that's fine, kill the buff totem, get the revenants. Next one, carcasses and prowlers, that's fine, hell knights, that's fine. Then, tyrants, buff totem, you kill one of the tyrants, a hell knight will spawn. Or two hell knights will spawn. Okay, kill them. 
something else spawns. I can't even remember what at this point. Uh, and then, you know, you kill the other tyrant, and then once all that's done, you think, oh, I'm finally done. A possessed by a spirit, which is a new, the new mechanic. Um, Hell Knight comes and just fucks your shit up. So that was just probably, like, at least an hour and a half of me ret retrying and retrying that one. Then when I went the other way, the rest of the blood swarm was kind of okay. The final trial was pretty kind of just, like, fiddly, because you're having to shoot a moving target whilst things are following you around, and at first I was like, this isn't very hard, and then I realized there were ads on the field that weren't just zombies, and I was like, oh fuck, so it gets more complicated, Blood Swamp, but I'm going off on a tangent here. The, the important thing to take away is, the game is long, like the levels are really fucking long. I watch like pro YouTubers who are like big into Doom playing it and they were doing like 50 minutes and the half hour runs and I was thinking, oh yeah, I can do that. And I was taking four hours to complete the same section because I just kept fucking dying because <laughs> I had it on too hard a difficulty for the first run and it has been like, like at least two months since I played the game because yeah, it's been a while since I picked up the game for fun. Um, so I was pretty, like, rusty, and this game assumes, this DLC assumes that you've beaten the game and that you're, like, the king. It also takes your sword away, so that, that was a bit annoying. Couldn't get my sword to work, which I thought, oh yeah, I'll just get this guy out of the way by using the sword. So I was talking about the mechanic. There's a few new enemies. I was hoping for a new gun. There wasn't a new gun. There's new enemies, and, uh... Yeah, the first one I'm going to talk about, because I have some beef, is the spirit. The spirit is basically the ghost of a summoner from Doom 2016, which is a nice callback. And they just make a certain, whatever enemy they possess, like, fucking impossible to deal with. Like, their weak points go away, so you can't, like, hamstring them a bit. They, um... You know, by shooting the guns off the mancubus, they just suddenly don't break. There's the, or if it's possessing a mancubus, and it becomes stronger, it becomes more resistant to damage, it becomes faster, it starts going fucking spammy as shit if it's a projectile person, it's just firing all the time, and you're just like, jeez, it's like turbos running the whole time with this character, this enemy. And if you put it into a stun state and then just keep hitting it, it won't die. I found a lot of the enemies wouldn't die this way. You had to really pump a lot of stuff into it if you wanted to kill it just without glory killing. So you really had to glory kill it just, for, just to stop you spending an hour on one enemy. And um, boy, was that just a... Uh, that was a clusterfuck. Some of those enemies, and they really throw in the spirit-possessed enemies nearer the end of the third level, uh, especially for the final boss. Um, what else was there, though? There was a, um, a new maker, because the maker drones weren't annoying enough to start with. Now they have more advanced makers that can do really annoying shit and are immune to all types of damage unless they do specific moves where they bring their shields down. And sometimes I was fighting them and the AI would just use its standard attack with this enemy and would barely ever use the special moves it was supposed to be using and bringing its shields down to give me an opening and would just plink at me and I couldn't do anything about it. Luckily, the game realized that it can't put spirits into the makers because if it does that, it makes it basically unplayable. Because how do you kill maker drones? How do you kill blood makers? By headshotting their weak point, their head. So the spirit removes the weak point. That would just make it like, you can imagine. <laughs> you just... Uh, you wouldn't be able to kill this enemy. But, uh, yeah. Overall, new gameplay elements were welcome. Um, it was fun, but, like, I was... At, by the end of my playthrough today, 
of my first run of it on ultra violence um i was just sat there thinking for fuck's sake please end and it's my own fault for playing it in such a ridiculously ass about face way where i thought it's three levels it's fine i'll do it in two sessions yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that take regular breaks because you get burnt out real fucking quickly <laughs> Unless you're really good at the game, um, or you're just not a scrub like me. Holy shit. <laughs> like, oh my god. It makes me not want to play Doom, and I love that game. But yeah, like, um, they're pretty sparse with the giving you BFG ammo. Um, they, like I said, the, the Crucible Sword doesn't make a return, or I couldn't get it. I was mashing that button that was the. Uh, shortcut for the crucible sword before but aside from that predominantly the gameplay remains the same it's the same loop you're expected and anticipated to be doing the same loop you were doing in the base game they've added a few things they've added a few trial style things there's little gimmicks in the blood swamp to try and make trials um just little things, there's nothing really too challenging. Uh, a little bit of platforming, a few platforming challenges where you're climbing some sort of like JoJo Part 2 esque tower where you're trying to climb to the top of the tower by climbing and platforming and jumping fire obstacles and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's just very, very weird. Um, yeah, like. Uh, Kind of felt like my tactics when uh, playing the game were really fucking jank. Uh, what I was doing was uh, essentially... <laughs> I realized that basically I'm playing the game at some points when I panic the worst way possible, which is literally backpedaling and running around and around and around the arena in a big, 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 big circle and just firing grenades at the things chasing me because like the big Hell Knights, Barons of Hell, I mean, the big, big ones, Barons of Hell. Not the actual Hell Knights, they're fine. Um, all the Dread Knights, they're okay. It's the Barons of Hell. It took me a while to remember how to, like, harry them and slow them down a little bit because the minigun didn't seem to be doing as much as I wanted it to be doing with the big guys. So I was sitting there going, huh, and when they're possessed, they don't freeze either because that would be too helpful. So um, you're ice bombing them and they don't do anything. Great. Anyway, um... <laughs> I'm sitting there backpedaling around and around an arena as a Hell Knight chases me and I'm just throwing grenades at his feet and he's just kind of stumbling and I'm thinking I'm just pissing him off, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just like, I'm going to get you, oh fuck, <laughs> just like, oh, why did you stop doing that, it's so annoying, <laughs> it's like, no, go away and I'm throwing these concussive grenades at him and he's just like stumbling, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> you just, it's like, I, I feel like I'm like the low level coffee table that's kind of like sturdy and he keeps stubbing his toe on it like i'm just pissing off this hell knight as he's blundering after me trying to stab me up real good and like the possessed ones like they can half your health in like two or three hits they can wreck you um I'm the low-level furniture to this guy. He's, like, chasing after me, and he's just, like, getting his foot stuck on my grenades. Like, he's stubbing his toe, and he's like, for fuck's sake, you're just really annoying me. And I'm like, I'm just pissing him off. I'm not doing any damage with the grenades. Um, so that was kind of funny. I was laughing about that for a bit because it was kind of funny. He's just... just looked, he just looked like... I was, it just felt like I was just annoying him. Uh... <laughs> Aside from that, uh, gameplay-wise, I liked everything but the final boss fight, which I'll just talk about in a second. So, the final boss had the same problems that the Khan Maker boss had for me, which was, I didn't think it was fun. And I feel like I'm in a minority here, and, like, spicy hot take... I hate those bosses. I don't know why. Well, I actually do know why. I'm going to explain why. The attacks do way too much damage and feel like bullshit. 
<laughs> like, it feels like their hitboxes and areas of effect are too wide from what the visual indicator is telling you. Now, with the Khan Maker, she had that big Hammer of Dawn-esque pillar of light chasing you, which felt like you couldn't get out of the way fast enough, and then it would fucking wreck you if it hit you. Which it would. Then she'd set fire to the entire fucking circular space she was on. Was it a she? It's a thing. I don't know. It's an alien. Sue me. Anyway, she had a female voice, I think. It was all reverberant. It was hard to tell. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. She's <clears throat> canonically dead now. Um, and maybe a symbol for, like, something. <clears throat> we'll talk about the, the elements where it very obviously is just aping Christian religion later. She used to set fire to the floor. The floor is lava, and the fodder enemies are fucking annoying. They're the ones that you have to headshot perfectly each time they keep swaying out of the way. That pissed me off that boss fight so much. Um, yeah, so the final boss is basically some bullshit like that again, where he's got a health bar. Spoilers, it's Samuel Hayden. And, um, it's just like... Oh, fuck you. It just has so many levels. So many levels of, like, changing. Like, there's, like, six different phases to this boss fight, but he has one health bar, and every time you get him down to, like, an eighth of his health bar, he just says, fuck you, puts up a shield that is fueled by spirits, so you can imagine what that's about. I have to go around killing the possessed things and then ghost-busting the spirits. You literally ghost-bust them as well, the spirits. You get the microwave beam on the plasma cannon, you connect it to them, and it goes, and it just, like, hoovers them up. Like your Luigi's mansioning these fucking Doom enemies, if you could ever anticipate that happening in a Doom game. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so there's a slight problem where they've tweaked how the Sentinel armor works, and if you fucking suck like me at these boss fights, and you don't like playing the boss fights, it's really frustrating, because it's like, okay, I keep dying, I get it, I suck, I'm bad. It's not letting me lower the difficulty, and I'm not about to do another 12-hour playthrough on Hurt Me Plenty just to get where I was before. I worked fucking hard to get to the final boss fight. I suck at the boss fight because there's so much platforming and just the floor is lava and moving orbs of death that still hit you outside of their tendrils, but fuck you, I guess. Also, I had a slight error and bug, I think, where at some point during the blood swamps, a buff totem was activated, and you know when they all speed up. And the spirits do the same thing, where their animations speed up and they seem really jerky, because they've literally just been artificially sped up by the buff totem. So their movements are all jerky. Some of the enemies just had that forever, for the rest of that save slot's playthrough. And I feel like I may have been playing Ultraviolence and accidentally enabled fast monsters on Eternal, which you can't do, <laughs> but I somehow bugged the game to have some weird buggy ultra violence with fast monsters enabled shit fest, which may explain why I was having so much trouble. Anyway, just a side note, that was happening on top of the fact that like possessed things were attacking me and uh, the tendrils felt like they were da damaging me outside and like straight up the cooldown on his attacks were fucking bullshit <laughs> like some points i was literally like killing his little floating tendril death balls by shooting them in their big obvious weak point which is what the game tells you to do sometimes he'd give like a full few minutes and then he'd cast the thing again like he'd recast them one time i shot both of them and as I shot the final one, he did the spell the spell move again and recast them. I literally just spent like a few minutes or like a few seconds, I don't know how long it took, and a load of my health going around killing these things to get them out of the way. And then he just went, okay, cool, they're back again. And I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> 
Also, he does this with his ads, too. Although the ads are independent, he doesn't cast them, they just show up. So the ads in this, the final boss felt like bullshit. Sometimes you'd kill them, and there'd be a huge cooldown before they came back. Other times you'd kill them, and it seemed like some sort of hidden timer, some sort of tick timer. Uh, sometimes you'd kill them, and then you'd turn around and look back again, and there'd be a new one re coming out of a void. And you'd just be like, I just fuck. Give me five seconds to fucking breathe. And it was doing my head in. And it got to the point where I was like... So, like I was saying, Sentinel armor has changed. It now does not, if you die repeatedly outside of a boss fight, it won't give you Sentinel armor, I don't think. I don't think I died enough in one specific checkpoint for it to have activated. And it gives you the option to activate it. I didn't get it. And I mean, I died a fuck ton on stupid shit, but like, you know... <clears throat> on the bosses, uh, it will activate it, but uh, only for the boss fight. <clears throat> now, if you finish the boss encounter and progress, it turns it off, which is good, because then you don't feel like a failure for the rest of the level if the boss fight was halfway through, or whatever. However... There's a problem with the final boss fight, because it goes through like six stages, like I mentioned. Every time you progress with Sentinel armor engaged, it will disengage at the next stage. This meant, because I fucking suck at these kind of things, that I would literally die three times to the first part, then it would go to the next stage and disengage my sentinel armor. And I'd be like, shit, I'd get my ass blown out backwards because I'm bad, and I'm honestly just gonna straight up say I'm pretty fu I was very tired and I was pretty bad at the game. By this point, I was just so fatigued and I just wanted it over with, so I wasn't even trying that much. I was just like, just let me through, just let me through, just me okay sentinel armor i'll just die three times i don't care and i kind of did a half-hearted effort for the first three times then i die and it keep respawning me it respawns you at the second stage each stage it checkpoints so but it disengages the sentinel armor so i was like dying three times on each section just so that I could keep the sentinel armor, which I know is a scrubby and scummy thing to do. I wasn't deliberately dying. I wasn't just standing there going, yeah, kill me, I don't give a shit. I was actually kind of making that half-hearted kind of like, let's see how this kind of works and what it wants me to do for this part. What's changed? All oh, the platforms are moving now. There's death lasers now. There's tendril beams now. There's like, now he's teleporting directly to the place that I am and knocking me off into the lava floor or he's getting his ad to do that for me. That feels like bullshit. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see if I can try and do it with... Oh, I've died three times. Fine, Sentinel armor. I'll equip it. I'll be a casual. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, it's not like I'm going to LP this anytime soon. <laughs> and I was just like, sat there like, yeah, pro Doom tuber. I am not. This was a wake-up call. Um, I thought, yeah, I'm hard. I can do the ultra-violence. I'm a real gamer. Holy shit, those boss fights. Every time. Everything else feels doable, the boss fights feel like bullshit. But that's just me. Whatever. They just don't feel fun. And then suddenly you have to change everything that you were doing and having fun with in the main game to, okay, rocket launcher with the homing mod on. Just keep hitting him. Just keep hitting him. Just keep hitting him. Hope he doesn't teleport out of shit. Just keep hitting him. Just keep hitting him. Oh, finally, he's down to the final eight for the bar. And his shield's gone up again, and we got to do the spirit section for the second time. So, yeah, that was, like, very unfun. But the rest of the game was pretty good. Uh, and there's a lot of, like, unlocks for, like, new Doom Guy skin colors for his armor and shit. So that's nice, because... To be honest, the base game doesn't really hand them out particularly freely. It's very hard. Like you, you have to either like one or two in the base game as unlocks, and then the rest of it's all like XP. You know, you got the classic Doom armor, the Praetor suit, the Sentinel suit, the Sentinel trainer suit, and um, 
if you beat the game at certain difficulties, it gives you a different color, like Midnight or Crimson for each, like, level. I don't even know what you unlock for Nightmare, because I am not that suicidal, and I don't have that much free time anymore. Um, if I did, I would probably try, but I'd probably find myself just crying in the corner after a while. And there's other video games I'd rather be playing than trying to do Doom for what would be literally the tenth time at that point. But anyway, that's basically my gripes about the gameplay. There's not really much to say. Sometimes it just feels like, oh, come the fuck on. This level design does not feel like it was trying to be an arena here. This feels like a corridor that was supposed to line me up to this. Why are you spawning tyrants? Or why are you spawning, like, two hell knights? Fine, I can handle it, but fuck you. <laughs> like, you know, like, why would you put this here? Fuck off. <laughs> but anyway, that's my gameplay rant. Let's just transition now into story. So, the reason I kept playing through it was because the story just was fucking wild. When I bought the DLC, I assumed it would be a side story. A lot of people were saying maybe it's something to do with the Titan that you, the Crucible was pulled out of in the game, in um, one of the uh, late game levels where you retrieve your Crucible. Uh, maybe it's that. Or uh, before Necrovol. Before Necrovol? I got this. It, my, my memory's hazy. Or it will be something to do with the Betrayer, maybe. Something, you know, that's like a B story or like is a side thing. The DLC goes in. And that's why I'm doing a spoiler cast. Because holy fucking shit. It's DLC and you kill fucking God. <laughs> you kill this universe's creator in the most side way possible. Like, <laughs> no shit's given. Oh, and also you resurrect Satan in three levels. Oh, and you kill Samuel Hayden. Just bombs are dropped. Now, a lot of these things, I kind of had a sneaking suspicion that these things were things for the next game. Like, I thought, you're gonna have to world build a whole sequel for this shit. You're gonna have to write a whole arcing story. There is no way in hell you can sit down and in three levels tell me all this shit. So the first thing you do, basically, is you walk into a level to do something. It's kind of loosely described to you, you're going to this base, there are people there, you need to stop the demons, they're still around. Okay. Oh, they're on Erdak now because of your actions in the base game. Khan Make is dead, it's all your fault. Icon of Sin's dead, it's all your fault. Yada, yada, yada. No one cares. They deserve to die. Fuck them. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> that just, uh... The first piece of lore you pick up is literally a picture of Samuel Hayden's robot body next to the Seraphim. It then flashbacks to the Seraphim who gives Doom Guy his powers with the Divinity Machine, which is shown in the base game. The hooded figure with the red cloak. Yeah, we go and retrieve his body. That's the first level. The first level's balls hard and, well, it's the least hard of the three, but it felt fucking hard. And you're sat there like, oh, we're retrieving the body of the Seraphim. This feels important. This feels like something that we're doing, and he's going to be a major character in the future. This Seraphim guy. And then he goes, yeah, that's Samuel Hayden. But his uh, god name is Samuel Maker or something like this. I can't say it properly because I'm an idiot, but it doesn't really matter. That bomb is dropped, and that's a suspicion I had from reading the lore of the base game months ago, I thought. They're going to reveal that Sam Maker is Samuel Hayden. That's totally going to be a thing. They're too similar. There seems to be a lot of, like, Vega's the father that's kind of vaguely revealed in the um, base game too. And you sit there and think, okay, that makes sense, I guess. It's, it is what it is. 
Um, that's the direction they've moved in. Maybe Samuel Hayden will make a return. He does for all about five seconds. They decide that the, well, Doom Guy decides to help resurrect Samuel Hayden into his old body, the Seraphim's body, because he's the same person. And I assume Doom Guy must either have amnesia or must know this and know that they're the same person. And it's really just for the viewer's knowledge that it's like a bomb and we're like, dun, dun, dun. But like, Doom goes, yeah, like, I just doesn't give a shit. Um, the second level, they say, okay, you need to retrieve the father's life sphere. They explain life spheres in the lore as basically being like save files for your goddamn soul. And, uh, they for some reason have a backup of the Dark Lord, like Satan. They just pulled the life sphere out of uh, Satan and turned him into a ball. You know, in case you, you want to catch him later or something, you just keep him in the corner. You know, for reference, there's Satan over there in the library, and um, they only refer to him as a Dark Lord. They never use phrases like God or Heaven, but they do use the phrase Hell, and they do they refer to like the Creator as the Father. So there's obviously a lot of Christianity parallels here, but they're kind of tippy toeing around saying this is God and Doom guys fucking wrecked him. But basically, you get told by Samuel Hayden, the Seraphim, same guy, to go retrieve this sphere that is god.exe, essentially. Who is also Vega. Just just go with it. Like, this is a lot I know. It's a bit, like, breakneck. But that's why I say it should have been a whole game. It feels like they kind of just went, shit, we don't have time for a whole game. Stuff it into DLC. Um... And uh, Doom Guy decides he needs to break the father's life sphere for reasons. And I'm still figuring these out, but basically the rules are explained to you afterwards. Which is when the story stops feeling like it's kind of going linearly and yeah, 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 you just weren't paying attention or yeah, 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 this was written in law. It starts to feel like you're taking footsteps across a bridge and you're just on blind faith, paving stones are coming up to meet your feet as you go along. Yeah, 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 this is all part of the plan. Oh, great, I'm glad I'm involved in this. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. The the paving slabs are being built, the bridge is being built underneath you as you walk, just keep moving forwards. And that's how the kind of plot starts to feel past around halfway through the Blood Swamps, or at least the end of the Blood Swamp level, where... Doom guy breaks the father's sphere. And then the rules in which why he did that and why he took the Dark Lord's sphere are explained way later, like near the end of the third and final level of this DLC pack. Which just means that you're sat there like, well, he's obviously not heel turning. Maybe he's just taking the Dark Lord's sphere because he's like, no one else can have it. If I have it, that'll stop him, and then I can fight hell and all this shit. There'll be a hell-fighting, demon-slaying reason. Because there's always a hell-fighting, demon-slaying reason. And I started to think, God, Doom Guy has been gradually developed into this rabid, genocidal lunatic over the character arc that spans his entire set of games. He starts off as guy who's just trapped on moon base and has to fight to get his way out and to survive and then just keeps having to fight to survive right up until he gets back to earth then has to fight through earth to survive and then at the end he beats the iconos in so it's fine in the first classic games and then it just gradually turns into he loves murdering demons and literally exists purely to murder demons and there are legends written about how much he loves to murder demons <laughs> and you start to feel like i think this is more than like a needs to thing for doom guy now and literally people are saying to him hey man we can work together i know you love killing demons but can you just wait for a second and he's literally like tearing this in the first in the 2016 game i mean 
uh, he's just tearing the, like the control panels off the wall as Samuel Hayden's like trying to speak sense into him and say, and breaking like all of the Argent equipment because he's like, this is the problem. It's got something to do with hell. Kill it, kill it, kill it. And you start to realize, pretty sure Doom Guy is pretty fucking unhinged at this point, uh, and is just like PTSD the fuck out on like demons because he's just willing to wreck everything associated with them even when people are like if you just preserve this one thing for 30 seconds we may be able to make a better situation and then you can kill it oh he's broken it already thank for fuck's sake you know what i mean and it's just like okay fine and it's fun to watch and it's kind of enjoyable especially the whole doom eternal shoot a hole through mars section and there's another one here where they're like the intern's talking to you. There's an intern this time talking to you. And he says, Hey, Samuel Hayden said retrieve the life sphere, but on your objective screen that you've personally written into your helmet hard here, it says destroy the life sphere. I, isn't that not what we're not supposed to be doing? Uh, okay, I'll shut up then. And <laughs> like, because he just doesn't say anything, Doom Guy. And you're sat there like, okay, kind of thing. I forget where I was going with this. But, like, the whole point is, like, it goes from he's willfully not listening to people because he wants to kill the demon, and then it turns into he is literally jeopardizing everything. Like, the fate of humans, the fate of gods. He killed heaven and pretty much all the angels and guardians of heaven in the base game, and now he's killed God, like the creator. But then they say, like I said, the paving stones cut rise up to meet his feet as he walks. They say, breaking the sphere doesn't kill God, it just stops him from manifesting as a physical person ever again. And you're like, feel like we're treading into God of War territories now, you know what I mean? Where we're just kind of fighting deities, and we're being told the rules as we do the thing, and the reason he takes the Dark Lord Sphere from what I can fathom is the only way to make sure the Dark Lord doesn't become a disembodied voice who can still talk to the legions of hell, like the father has for doom guy uh, because he broke the sphere is um you gotta let him manifest as a human being or as a physical thing again then kill it <laughs> so yeah no big deal just let satan manifest in flesh in the real world and then kill satan and yeah <laughs> That's a whole thing, and that's a stinger for this this part one DLC, is as they do this, they don't feel the need to tell Doom Guy until he's resurrecting Satan, or the Dark Lord, because they don't want to touch Christian naming conventions, because they'll probably get Catholic shit posters going, yeah, I'm going to have, uh, all over their shit, because they have nothing better to do. Um... And, like, fine, fair enough, but, like, apparently it's fine to, to treat pagan religions way worse for the God of War series. <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, yeah, we can be shown murdering these ancient religions, but, oh, don't touch that. I mean, do you remember the fact that God of War was supposed to actually eventually touch upon Christian religions? Like, the original design was that he goes and basically kills loads of ancient religions and then eventually reaches Christianity or something and then they were like oh yeah that's not gonna go down well in America so we better not like or oh, most places to be honest that still have a lot of church shit and uh yeah we can't get away with that and it's like oh yeah but it's fine if you stab four in the face right or like Zeus Zeus anyway this is the same thing We'll just turn it into biomech aliens. But literally, there's a disembodied voice called the Father, who is essentially the creator of the universe as we know it, and he also creates hell as a mistake. That was his first attempt at Earth. 
So he's essentially the Holy Spirit stand-in of this. Then we kill, in the base game, the Khan Maker, who I assumed was basically like... Kind of like a stand-in for like a physical manifestation of God as she was like the main leader and the holder of heaven and shit. And then like, by the end of this, you're killing Samuel Maker, who turns out to be the Holy Spirit, the Father's right-hand man throughout all of this. So you feel like a, like a strong disciple and someone who has walked among the earthly people. So I feel like he's like the Jesus adjacent. You know what I mean out of all of these? So you've got like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in like a kind of like the alien tech mother, the alien tech possessed and uh, changing body, body swapping Jesus, and the disembodied AI voice of the Spirit. And it kind of goes into all of that weird thing of Jesus just be an alien, y'all, kind of like thing that a lot of conspiracy theorists say, if Jesus was real, he was an alien and he was tricking us all. Um, very interesting. Uh, I wonder if they, if they felt braver, they would actually have just named these people Jesus or a very obviously similar name and gone, Instead of the father, this is God, this guy is Satan. Because it feels like actually they added a lot of like fantasy and sci-fi fantasy and space drama and tech elements to the world building they made anyway that I feel like they may have just kept with like the names they chose anyway. I mean... Uh, there is a huge fan base of Doom people who are like, no, it's a very Christian game because you're killing things from hell, and that's a good thing. So I want, I've always wondered how these people who see Doom this way feel about Eternal, because you are literally killing the closest thing this universe has to angels and now God. So that might be an interesting opinion to hear from people like that. Because there are even one of the designers of the original Doom said it's completely fine that he's killing demons. I'm a staunch Christian, or something like this. I can't remember the full. I can't remember who it was, but one of the designers said something along the lines of "It's fine because he's killing the demons." So I think it's really pro Christianity. I wonder what those people are thinking now, as we literally slaughter pantheons of allegedly good people and li the literal creator and they're called makers for fuck's sake <laughs> you know you can't get closer than that really without literally saying this be Jesus but yeah like I said the plot feels a bit like it manages to simultaneously the lore and the plot feel like it's trying to catch up the people who are like they were falling asleep in the cutscenes. And, you know, the, your relative that always half watches a movie and is on their phone, and then they're like, why is he talking to him? I don't know why anymore. Like, aren't they supposed to be enemies? It's like, aren't you watching the movie? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm watching the movie. It's like, well, then you should know, right? What's his name again? Yeah, sometimes it feels like that. Other times it feels like it's, like, kind of just filling in the gaps as it goes and it's going forward with the plot and you're being you're receiving the law too late so it very much feels like you're going you're going to one side saying wait why did he take the devil's life sphere and kill the god and the game's like kind of giving you a semi-flaccid excuse of just like now here are the rules and you're like this could have been given to me like at least an hour ago and it would have made more sense but fine okay your form of storytelling, who am I to judge? Anyway, just wrapping this up, because I've already overrun a fuck ton. Uh, three quarters of an hour on this. Um, if I was going to say, it's an interesting thing. The conclusion, I felt like it was coming, but at the same time, I wouldn't have put all of my money on that. Like, the conclusion was a stinger where, like, I was saying, 
they reform Satan in front of the, the Doom Slayer. And guess what? He's just like Doom Slayer, but edgier, if that's possible. He has more tattoos and his eyes are red. That's essentially it. So basically, we're just ramping up to basically the Doom thing having a perfect rival instead of these Marauder guys and shit, like an actual nemesis who is literally the evil twin of him. So basically the Dante Virgil thing again. Uh, they basically, and I feel like that's a good sign, a big sign that they are really trying to move the lore of Doom to a more character action kind of standpoint rather than just like a FPS where he's he's got guns and he's trying to shoot all the things to get out. Shut up, don't think about it. They've turned it really into... Yeah, no, these big themes of heaven versus hell. Heaven's not what it looks like. They make mistakes. They're very, like, condescending and rude. They're very, like, oh, you have the honor of serving me. You know, there's a lot of, like... But there's a lot of problems. Like, the creator made mistakes. The hell is angry with the creator because it didn't give them immortality and all this shit. It's very complicated, but at the same time, it's very simple. <laughs> like, I don't really know. Um, and you're sat there, like, feeling like... But the power scaling, though. But before we get into the power scaling of that, because I felt like that was just really, like, unearned, or just a bit like, are you now telling me that this... Um, the other big thing that really fucking pissed me off is we've killed literally everyone who has told us what to do, and Samuel Hayden has been the guy who's been telling us what to do for the longest amount of time. Like, since 2016, he's been telling us to do shit, and we've always been like, nah man, fuck you, you're the man. We don't like the man over here, fuck you. And, like, since we've met him, we've been being like, fuck you, Samuel Hayden, fuck you. Like, that's basically Doom's guy's stance on it since the beginning. And it kind of, like, now that we know who he actually is, Samuel Hayden, it actually makes sense why Doom guy would be like that. Kind of. Like, maybe he doesn't, like, whatever the reason. Um, but, you know... Um, we are robbed of the ability to kill Samuel Hayden. Doom guy is standing over him with a knife, his knife glaive thing that he uses, ready to murder him. And the father slash Vegas says, you don't have to kill him and teleports Samuel Hayden's weird mutant corpse, transfigured corpse out of the place. And it says, hey man, your, your mission's really over there. And it just feels like, come the fuck on, it's been like two and a half games if you think DLC is like a point five. It's like, come on, man, just let me kill the dude. Like, you weren't this, uh, like, you you weren't this, like, gatekeepy with any other character that is like a named voiced character that has a physical model. Think about every other character in the game except for, say, the Betrayer, and you're thinking, because he's not really, like, he's kind of a pseudo-ally, or he's just a talking head character, at least. Virtually everyone else that you've met who hasn't been helping you has been killed. In a game. But Samuel Hayden is, like, this payoff that's just never going to happen. He keeps getting teleported away at the last moment, or just walks away and gets what he wants. And it's frustrating, because he's such an asshole. Like, <laughs> you know? But now you realize why he's got a god complex, because he literally kind of is the right-hand man of the creator, so it kind of all makes sense now. But uh, the only other thing that pisses me off was about the writing was... <sighs> Doomguy is strong because he's a human that's been thrown into a machine that gives him god powers which feels like he shouldn't be on the same level. And the way the boss levels are staged at, we're fighting like the right-hand man of the creator. So not the strongest person in the universe, 
like a guy that kind of helps, like the caretaker, like the butler or something. That's what I assume Samuel Hayden is. He probably has a lot of power, but you kind of feel like, come on, man. He's just, he's not like, he's not actually a deity. Or, like he is, but he's not like the big cheese. You know what I mean? And um, in the past, like they've posed things such as big cyber demons or titans or the icon of sin or uh, the Khan Maker as major threats to Doom Guy. Now, the Khan Maker, I guess, would be the highest in the chain of command, in term, although she's the opposite side to a lot of these things, but she then gets corrupted. And you're thinking, like, she's like the protector of Erdak, but she's still not the big, big. She's just like a chief angel or something, or whatever. It, does, it feels like they're still quite low in the pecking order, and to be honest, the way the game has posed it, they've made it seem like these are the biggest challenges Doom guys ever had to face, which it does feel like that is true, and that they're still pretty important characters, but they're not God. They're not Satan. They're like stand-ins, like they're really strong deputies of God, deputies of Satan or the Father and the Dark Lord, if you want to use their parlance, because it's kind of evident what they're going for, but, you know, some people may be offended by the idea that they're literally just riffing on the whole, uh, because it feels very associated to Christianity, like I said before. But anyway, it kind of feels like Doom guy is not strong enough, and he's fucking strong. Like, they basically point you at Satan and say, Satan isn't Satan. He's not the father. That's stupid. He's created by the father. So that clearly means that he's basically like Doom guy but evil. And you're thinking, at no point did I think Doom Guy to be a like, I know he's infused with God powers, I know that, but I never really saw him as basically like, I don't know, the strongest force for good, at, like, equivalent to the devil. Like, what would that be? The opposite of the devil, but not God, because God the creator's here. Actual, like, physical gods and angels exist and he's fought them. <clears throat> and it seems like they're kind of pushing Doom Guy to be strongest in the universe, but it's kind of the same problem as the Goku problem, where, yeah, he's pretty strong, but now it feels like the writer is just pushing him up and making his number go strong. It's like, there's this level where we've been fighting at, where you're like, these guys are pretty strong, and they're just the deputies and the generals of Satan's army. I can't imagine how strong... Oh, it's just evil me. But I'm not, like, the leader of all the good forces in the world. If anything, all the good forces in the world fucking hate me. And I'm not the strongest person. I'm just this guy who loves running and gunning. It feels very unearned. <clears throat> in the sense that at no point are you really shown. They do show feats, though, to be fair. They do show feats where you're fighting enemies that are massive. Enemies that, like, destroy half the planet. Like, you save the world from hell. But, like, <clears throat> there is this just kind of a thing. There is this just kind of thing where you feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just me and power levels have gotten into my head a lot lately because of DB, Dragon Ball, whatever. Uh, but, like, it feels like Doom Guy's a pretty strong guy who still has to listen to certain people, even though you can tell he's fucking foaming at the mouth when he has to listen to Khan Maker do her bullshit. Or when Samuel Hayden says, you've got to help me, because I demand that you help me. And then at the next moment he gets, he tries to fuck him over. And it's like, fair enough. But he still feels like he has to help them. 
And yeah, like, they're barely controlling him. And yeah, most of the time, most of the time, they're not really, um, he's not really listening to them. But it still feels like he's just doing that, like, you know, you don't tell me what the fuck to do behind their back. Because he can't actually defy them directly, because if he defies them directly, he'll fucking lose. That's what it felt like, or it felt like he wasn't ready or prepared. And, like, while we've been fighting harder and harder things in the game to ramp up the challenge, it doesn't feel like, you know, the feats have gotten bigger. There's a bit, for example, at the end of Blood Swamp, where this giant corpse titan rises up from the swamp and lifts you to the place you need to go, right at the final part of the level. And I was sat there looking at it like, holy fucking shit, that titan is huge. I hope we don't have to fight it. I don't even know how Doom Guy could fight something like that. It's too big. It's too massive. I don't even get how he killed a Titan in the past. I don't even get how they would orchestrate that into a, co a compelling level and gameplay design right now. Because it feels like it would end up being like those God of War fights where it's just big, slow, God titan puts his hand down and you hit the quick time and he bounces back because there's hardly and you have to climb him and shit because it's like at that scale it becomes quite hard to like i mean you can run and gun him but you just be staring at his knees the whole time because like let's be honest he's too big for the screen and doomgo would just be running around around his feet and trying to topple him it's just I don't know how it would work as a... Maybe that's something for the next gen to work out. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, someone more intelligent in game design than me. Uh, but yeah, like, um, it just feels like, like Goku in Dragon Ball. He's pretty strong. And then for the plot to continue, they go, oh, now he has to fight, like... It's actually very similar to the Dragon Ball Super God of Destruction thing, where everyone's like, but Goku's got to be as strong as the God of Destruction soon. And everyone's like, that's fucking stupid. The actual fans are like, that's fucking stupid. And Go Goku stands are all like, nah, he can get stronger than literally the fucking ceiling of this universe. <laughs> and it's like the same kind of thing of like, you want to fight essentially the strongest thing on the planet. The strongest thing in the entirety of creation. And like I said, he offhand just fucking seals off the creator of the entire universe, the whole of existence, into like a disembodied voice, because fuck you, I'm Doom Guy. So it just kind of feels like... Maybe these things aren't as strong as I think they are, and they're just things that happen to do things. But I'm sitting there thinking, you're throwing big words around. Like, you know, you're throwing the devil. And, like, you've got to think, for all of these Doom games up until now, we have never seen actual boss of hell once. And the fact that they have the balls to pull that off in DLC and then go, yeah, it's just Doom Guy, but he's evil because we don't know how to make something bigger than Doom Guy now. Doom Guy is the ceiling. You're like, is he though? Because we were literally interacting with the creator of the universe earlier and crushed his ball. So I guess we are now, but it feels really unearned and strange. Uh few other things I wanted to make a remark on as well. It feels like this should have been a full game because it feels like they should have established earlier on or had time to establish that this was the only way that they could stop Hell from invading. Because they, they kind of say, yeah, Hell was a problem on Earth and then Hell was a problem now. It's in Erdak, uh, which is like the heaven adjacent in this world, paradise adjacent, whatever. And um, they just kind of put that out there, and then they're like, yep, portal's open, can't close it. And you're like... And then they just at the last minute say, yeah, but if you kill the Dark Lord, though, you know, that easy thing, <laughs> just killing Satan. Um, yeah, if you kill him, 
it will like kind of disconnect hell or destroy hell or like they didn't seem to specifically say destroy hell but it will like seal hell away again probably because they want to like not completely end the doom franchise by saying yeah hell's gone because <laughs> what else would doom fight then like what would be the point of another doom game hell came back <laughs> it grew again um and anyone, any denizen of hell, any of the demons that are not in hell when hell disconnects will all instantly die and turn into ashes or whatever. Like, poof, gone, forever. Ping, bye-bye, bye-bye demons. All a pipe dream. And it's like, it feels like a conversation should have at least happened where someone said, are you sure there's not any other way? Like... Or at least, like, we tried something else, and it didn't work. Because it feels like it's just going from the aftermath of what happened in the first, the, the first, in the base game. And it's just saying, yep, only choice now, kill the devil. And you're just like, but will that help? And they go, oh, yeah, 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 this law page that you just picked up said that actually that will solve all your problems. It's like, well, isn't that convenient? Because Doom Guy is doing it anyway, <laughs> you know, and it just feels like, yeah, it just feels a little bit. Um, they needed more time to establish certain things. They needed more time to talk about Le Devil, because uh, yeah, I mean it's part one. I'm sure part two will be more about it. But as we've literally killed the creator of all prevented the creator of everything from ever being in a human body ever, or any body uh, ever again and we've killed the Jesus adjacent or no he was spirited away flipping Samuel Hayden um, it kind of just like makes you sit there and think well it wouldn't surprise me if part two is literally they introduce the Dark Lord and by the end of it you've killed the Dark Lord and then they're like, yep, that's the end of the Doom franchise for the time being. We'll reboot it later. Because it feels like they're just kind of like... It feels like they were anticipating a sequel. And then maybe during the Microsoft buyouts or like Mick Gordon leaving or something, they thought, right, we're going to just knock this series on the head. And then we can just start up Doom some other time. Or we can just finish Doom and then... You know, leave it a few years and maybe come back to it again. You know, kind of like how Batman and the Nolan verse happened, where it's like, right, you know, a lot of stuff happened after the Dark Knight. Uh, Heath Ledger died. It was really tragic. All the stuff happened. And, you know, we're just going to knock it on the head with Dark Knight Rises and then we're just going to stop. And if they want to reboot it, DC, they can reboot it. But, like, that's me done. You know, like, and that's it. And that, that section's st stopped now beginning and too many things have happened for us to continue with this franchise and we're just gonna say what we have to say to close it off and then that's it it's done that's what i thought was coming from this but like i mean i'm just kind of stabbing in the dark here but yeah uh the only other thing i can think of saying right now something else may come to me later uh, is it felt like the drop that Samuel Hayden was the Seraphim was just like so fast and then he was picked up and dropped so quickly in that period of time that just stuff happened so quickly in that period of time that it felt like they didn't really have enough time to give him any moments as a Seraphim at all and that kind of felt weird it felt like if this had been a more expanded upon game and idea, it would have been given a lot more time, but there was hardly any time. Uh, anything else I want to say? The level design is absolutely amazing. I did have some issues with the environment kind of like interacting weirdly with me. A few times I kind of pinged across the screen, especially upon death or I sunk through the geometry and at one point I was looking where apparently I shouldn't have been looking in one of the swamp levels I can't remember where and I looked off in the distance and all the geometry was like 
fighting itself and clipping in and out of itself. And at some point I tried to access a secret route the wrong way and I kind of just shot up into the air because I hit a collision box that I was basically was trying to stop me from like skyrimming <laughs> over into the secret passageway instead of going the correct way. And yeah, that was a little strange. Uh, but aside from that, it feels like a pretty polished game. It was fun. It was so time consuming. And I'm hoping that the next one is a little like the levels are more plentiful, but shorter. And there was a slight issue of where you'd finish a tough encounter. You'd exit the room to the tough encounter and go down the corridor for like all of 10 seconds. Thank God that's over. And then before you could even get that four out, the next encounter would happen. And it was sometimes harder, sometimes less hard, but you were still sat there like, oh my, like, can I just have five seconds, please? Please just let me stop. Like, you know, the base game, you could walk down a corridor for a little while before you encountered something else. Literally, it's like room, room, room. Room, corridor that is actually room, then room, then room, then platforming section, then straight into another room. It's very intense. If you like that, it's there. Um, overall, I enjoyed it. Near the end, I was getting burnt out and tired, but that's my fault for playing it that way. Um, I enjoyed it. The reason you're never going to see me play it on the channel is it's so long that it makes my original blind playthrough of Doom Eternal look short. I can't realistically get it down fast enough unless I play on super easy baby mode, and then what's the point? Um, that it won't be like an editing and uploading nightmare. So that's a shame, but uh, that's why I recorded my thoughts. Um, yeah, I guess that's everything. Uh, I'll see if I feel like doing this again. I kind of like the spoiler cast thing, uh, you know, if something else comes up and I want to talk about it, I can do this again, maybe. Uh, final thoughts? Final verdict? I really would have liked a new gun. I don't know why. I don't think it would have actually added anything. <laughs> but I feel like I, I would have liked a new gun. But, you know, why add something that would then maybe not be balanced or just be pointless so you know aside from that it was a it was a fair enough experience all right i'm just gonna stop now it's been like an hour